Hello everybody and today will be my third video tutorial which I will focus on the Xiangqi notation. After finishing this tutorial, other than the common commonly used notations, uh, you will also learn the notation for special situations like this. Uh, what would the notation be for this move and also for this move? But before we continue, uh, why do we have to learn the notation for Xiangqi? Because it will be essential for communicating. And the notation in Xiangqi is not like the notation used in international chess, uh, whereby, uh, whereby there is a fixed coordinate for each of the squares or where the pieces are. Instead, the notation is relative to the player. Before we continue, there are only three types of movements that are possible for each piece. You can either advance a piece, retreat a piece, or traverse a piece. Uh, the notation, the formula for the notation in Xiangqi is can be considered uh, uh, can be considered with the following components. In component A, it will be the piece that is to be moved, be it the cannon, the chariot, the horse, etc. The second component will be the file on which it was on. And the third component will be the type of movement that was made, and the last component was will be how many intersections that it has advanced or retreated, or the final destination file that it had transversed. So for transversing a piece, let's say for the cannon over here, the cannon, the red cannon is located on the, on the second file, so the first component will be C. The second component will be 2, and as it transverse, traverse to the central file, the third component will be an equal sign, which would mean traverse, and the last component will be the final destination file of the cannon. So the mo moving this cannon to the central file here will be given as C2 equals to 5, which should be the most commonly used um, opening move in Xiangqi today. Okay, in the next section, we will be discussing the notation for advancing or retreating a linear piece. Okay, a linear piece will refer to the chariot, the cannon, the pawn, or the king. Again, the same formula for the notation is used. For example, if this chariot were to capture the black chariot, you would have to move R to plus 5 to capture the black chariot, as, uh, as the notation will be shown here. To move the chariot back to its bottom rank, it will be R2 minus, to represent retreating, 4, as shown here. Uh, for pieces that do not move linearly, like the horse, elephant, and advisor, the notation will be a little bit different. Uh, instead of the number of intersections where they are moved uh, in front or backwards, the destination file is used instead. So, for example, in this uh, example, moving the horse to the riverbank, say to the intersection marked with X, will be H3 plus 4. H3 plus... Four, where the final uh, component will be will refer to the the destination file of the horse. Retreating the horse will be h three minus two, or h three minus four. If you were to move the horse to the central file in front, it will be h three. It will be h three plus five. As for the elephant, moving the elephant to capture the black pawn will be written as E9, E9 plus 7. Capturing the cannon will be E9 minus 7. And for the advisor to capture the, red, uh, the black chariot will be A5 minus 6. Uh, finally, for pieces in tandem, that means when there are two pieces in the same file, the notation will be changed a little bit. Um, 
in the past, uh, you could use either uh, another plus sign or F to refer to the piece in front. For the piece at the back, R would be used to refer to the piece behind or the rear. So for in this example, for the red chariot to capture the black chariot, it will be R plus plus 5 whereby the R plus refer to the chariot in front. There would be no need to refer to the file in this situation because they can only exist on only one file. So for the so for the uh, red chariot to capture the black horse in front, the, it will be R plus minus 2. Well, for this chariot in the back to capture the black horse, it will be R minus plus 2. The traversing component would be also the same. It will be R plus equals to 4 for the red chariot to capture the black cannon. Okay. Okay. After discussing the, ten the notation for tandem linear pieces, the next thing we will discuss is about the notation for nonlinear pieces. Uh, everything is the same except for the fact that the last component would refer to the destination file. So in this example, retreating the horse to x would be h plus minus 7, where 7 would be the destination file. Advancing this horse to x would be h minus plus 7. Uh, for advisors and elephants, uh, there would be no need to use the plus or F uh, sign to denote which piece was in front because there's only one move possible. For example, if the advisor here were to move to the centroid, uh, this is called the centroid of the palace, uh, only one move is possible, A6 minus 5. It would not be possible to re use A6-5 to refer to moving this advisor to the centroid. Uh, the, same thing, the same thing would go for the elephant. The last part of my tutorial would deal with an issue that has been quite a uh, which has been quite a problem in for some time. But fortunately in the 200 and 2018 uh, well, Xiang Qi rules, it has been clarified. Okay, um, what would happen if there were tandem pawns like three or four or five or even two sets of tandem pawns on the board? What would the notation be? Because the notations mentioned prior to this uh, situation would not be applicable. Uh, this would be also referred to the first two boards that I mentioned that I showed at the beginning of the tutorial. According to the World Shang Chi rules, if there were three pawns on the same file, the first integer would refer to the position of the pawn in that file. One would refer to the pawn at the front, two would refer to the pawn uh, to refer to the pawn immediately behind the first pawn and so on. So for two sets of tandem pawns, the same thing can also apply. For example, in this uh, board, each pawn can only move, there's only one move, legal move possible for each move, for each pawn, sorry. So, uh, if you were to name the pawns, for example, the red pawns, the red pawns on red's first file will be uh, in denoted, denoted as such. The first, the front, the pawn at the front in the first file will be noted. No, I will be denoted as one one. So it can only move to move. It can only move here, and the notation will be one one equals to two. For three or four or even five pawns in tandem as in this as in the case of the black pawns they would be numbered as such so uh, one one equals to two refer to this move and for this for the if you were to move the rear pawn of in the ninth file to the eighth file it would be two one two two nine equals to eight and moving the pawn from 
moving the pawn on the cross river bank rank to the second file the second file here will be 5 1 equals to 2 uh, this is one of the biggest breakthroughs that I have noticed in the world Xiang Qi rules and uh, I'm in the past there was a document on the world Xiang Qi Federation site but it was not as clear as this and so far I'm very happy that um, they clarified this situation okay in the final part of my short tutorial I will do a simple introduction of the forms of notation that were used by the ancient Chinese uh, basically there are several formats but two of the most commonly used ones were uh, using a poem with 90 unique Chinese characters to represent each of the intersections on the board and also purely descriptive notations whereby a move will go something like a chariot to capture the third pawn or cannon is retreated to the riverbank uh, in Chinese uh, shown here on the right will be the scheme that was used by Wang Zaiyue when he wrote his plum flower manual as you can see there were 90 intersections each represented by a Chinese character and uh, I've deliberately chosen to use the traditional form of Chinese way, which was the form that Wang Zaiyue used and for uh, Shang Chi enthusiasts who wanted to want to know what the poem was about, I've done a simple translation which I've also collected in my uh, translated version of Wang's Wang Wang Taiyue's Plum Flower Manual. And uh, thank you, and please subscribe to my channel. I will be doing many more videos in the near future, and uh, I thank all for your encouragement on YouTube. Thank you.